I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, and I really hoped that I knew it. I just didn't see how Taru's mom would actually say I'll never forgive you to Kyo. I mentioned it when it was originally brought up, either A, he misheard, or B, she didn't finish her sentence, right? It turns out she didn't finish her sentence. She had all these thoughts in her dying moments, but unfortunately the only words that actually came out were I'll never forgive you, which for a boy who blames himself for her death for not pulling her away, it's understandable why that would mess with his brain. But I truly thought when the cat would be out of the bag, no pun intended, that what would happen is Kyo would remember probably the full sentence. But I'm actually really glad to see that rather than him knowing the truth of what she said, instead he has to put his trust in Toru, the woman he loves, understanding that one, if Toru says that her mother would never say that, and even if she did, she wouldn't mean it in such a hostile way, I have to believe her. I have to be able to put my trust in someone and understand that I might not always know what's best, that maybe things aren't always as clear as I might think and someone who knew the mother longer than himself, you know, I have to just accept that it's time for me to not blame myself, it's time for me to move on, and even if somehow you wronged her, I think what you're giving me is more than enough to make up for it. I like that rather than going what I thought was going to happen, they went really original with it. I don't think I've ever seen something to this degree where someone thought something very negative was said, and instead of like you know, just moving on and trusting in someone else's opinion. Rather, they always hear the full thought. They get a playback of a memory, this or that. That was incredible, and it was heartbreaking, I have to say, while being so beautiful all at the same time. Seeing her in this, like, afterlife such situation, saying, you know, you fought well, you did good, she gets to hopefully pass on and be peaceful, knowing that Toru is A-OK -okay and that everything is going to be fine, while you have Toru and Kyo in the present being able to move on from this horrible memory. I mean, the entire speech that she had going on in her mind in her dying moments is completely focused on Toru, who's going to take care of her, who's going to care for her, everything like that. I mean, it's that type of emotion where you get that feeling in your throat where you're like, oh my god, I'm going to ball crying, like you feel like you're getting choked up. This is probably the first time I think Fruit Spastics really invoked that powerful of an emotion. I would argue that the death scene of the mother and hearing what she was actually thinking all along was probably the most powerful sequence in the entire series for me. That's how good I thought it was. And to just have that nice closure, something I knew was probably going to happen to some degree. I wasn't sure if we'd ever touch upon it fully again, but I thought it might get brought up in passing. You know, either we'd hear more, or if something like we got with Toru, you know, they'd move on from it. But to see, like, five-ish minutes fully dedicated to it was really, really beautiful. And something I was really excited to see in this episode had to be Yuki as well as Machi. I mean, clearly we were getting it, because Yuki ran off at the exact same time that Kyo ran off. It's just... Even though before last week's episode I thought it'd be all in the same episode, because of the whole god backstory, there was no way to naturally fit it in. And if this was a rush season, they would have condensed the god backstory and they would have gave Yuki and Machi like two minutes at best, and they would have wrapped it all up, say, last week. But this is really an endgame that gives everyone their spotlight. Between Yuki and Machi finally being able to embrace each other with that hug and a kiss, you saw the entire spectators in the background just like blushing and being like, oh my. I didn't see that one coming, to him finally, you know, being the last one to be set free. Such a powerful sequence. It's this lonely and inspiring moment where something that's been with you for so long is finally gone. It was painful most of the time, but I mean, it is something that's hard to get rid of. How do you progress into your next stage of life? Well, Yuki hugs her. I mean, this is his next stage of life. Yuki and Machi in Season 2 were probably one of my favorite parts of the last season. They had so much time to really build a growing relationship, and I knew they were going to be perfect together. There were so many sweet times with them, and to see them finally get that closure that I wanted to see. No idea how next week will go, given it's the last episode. I imagine it'll be just a lot of, like, looking at where the characters are going. But seriously, I am so happy to see Best Couple here really embrace it. Granted, there's a lot of Best Couples, but I mean, Yuki and Machi, ever since Season 2, have been, like, one of the ones I've been rooting for the most. And it's so great to finally see them get that happy goodbye, pretty much. You know, goodbye to the will they, won't they, hello to the beautiful embrace. I mean, it's going to be great to see where they're going to go. And I love that Machi literally wanted to give something to Toru because Toru saved Yuki. And if she saved Yuki, I mean, I have to thank the person who saved the one that I love. 
such a beautiful sequence in general, but one of the more shocking ones for sure was actually seeing Akito embrace her feminine side and, you know, originally it planned to apologize, but didn't fully commit to it because what I really appreciate, if she apologized, it would feel like she was simply asking for forgiveness and a way out and she recognizes that she doesn't necessarily deserve that. So she's going to continue being the head as her and Shigure, you know, clearly become a couple, which is another pairing that I thought was destined to happen. I'm glad to see it did. I mean, I never will forgive all the shit that happened with Octo, and clearly based on some of the characters, especially Rin, I mean, granted with her not even looking at Octo, it seems like certain characters will never want to be associated with her other than, you know, when they have to. But there's going to be plenty of opportunities, I think, for Octo to make amends and build new relationships, and it does feel to me that she will be sticking to one man, and Shigure will stick to one woman, and I'm really happy to see that moment, because really, I didn't think we'd see that at all. Given the fact that they're all free, I thought they would just, you know, up and leave. But the fact that everyone minus Shigure came to that location and embraced what she had to say, I mean, it does feel like freedom has finally been secured, and it's something that rewind to the first season and especially when you get into the darker stuff of season one and then you see season two how the hell are we going to be free you knew toru would be a factor in it but like really did we ever think we'd be able to go from pushing characters out windows stabbing characters left and right to cliff sides falling off to be able to sit so peacefully with someone who has been a prisoner just as much as all of them actually be able to say, you know, we're all going to do our own thing now. And I really like that Kyo himself is trying to really push himself out there. He's going to be leaving far away and he wants Toru to come with him, but he understands that he can't force her to do anything. You will have to be away from your friends. You'll have to, you know, you'll be probably very lonely and poor in comparison to where you are now. But, you know, she's someone who will always stick by his side. I'd be much more lonely if I wasn't near your side than if I wasn't near theirs. Which is a pretty big growth for her, not only someone who is humming and hawing, can I love Kyo more than I love my mother, she also has always been a very social person, right? So it's nice to see the couples and how they're working, it really does feel like real writing. I mean, we had a show that kicked off with boys getting turned into animals when Toru hugged them or touched them, right? But now we're at a point where they're all normal humans and the supernatural curse is no more and everyone can you know make their own decisions make their own mistakes and be proud of what's gonna happen and while not everyone ended up with who they loved and wanted they also recognize that the heart wants what the heart wants and momiji is probably one of the best examples proud that kyo is no longer running and is embracing toru you have the cheating joke but you still have the i'm proud that you made the right decision keep her happy and I'm going to try to find my own happiness down the line. Incredible stuff. I mean, Fruits Basket has been a masterpiece for a long, long time, for many years now for the anime. But I'm really happy to see how good it stuck its landing. And really, they could do whatever they want next week. They could have a goddamn picnic episode for 20 minutes. I wouldn't care. I feel satisfied. Let's see where they're going to go. Maybe we'll have a time skip. No idea. But I'm glad to have experienced Fruits Basket in all its glory and directing on point this episode. Beautiful tearjerker. And that's how you'd want to see the Fruits Basket anime go out, right? Let me know your thoughts and feelings and definitely your favorite moments down below. What do you hope to see maybe with next week's episode to tie it all together? If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you have to new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.